bombs are the most important enemy in Mario Maker, but we both know why you're here. Cue the theme song. Welcome to Object Fix Up, the low production quality series where I talk about stuff. Today's topic is the bomb. The bomb is a standard Mario enemy available in every single game style. It has a very similar movement pattern to a Goomba, and the main difference is that it gives you a bomb when Mario stomps on it. Bombs have a very similar behavior to Goombas in terms of how they walk around, you can put them in pipes and blocks, etc. I'm not gonna talk about that. If you wanna hear about Goombas, go watch the Goomba Guide. Today, I'm gonna focus on the bomb part of the bomb. Bombs have three main states, a regular walking bomb, a stunned bomb that can be thrown as normal, and a lit bomb form that still counts as an enemy that can damage Mario. A bomb's other main variant is a winged bomb, which can fly through terrain without any sorts of problems. There are also giant bombs, which can be kicked around, but cannot be thrown. Winged bombs, when stomped, lose their wings, but do not get ignited. Bombs can turn from a regular walking form to a lit bomb arm whenever they come into contact with fire, be it from a fire bar, a burner, a lava bubble, burning cheap sheep, etc. Bombs can also be activated by fire bros or char bars. This list is not exhaustive, it just gives you an idea. These forms of fire don't actually damage the bomb, so it still retains its hitbox as an enemy. Attacks such as Red Yoshi Fire and Mario's Fireballs can ignite bombs and also put them into a stunned state. Furthermore, bombs will be lit regardless of whether or not the fire source, the bomb, or both are on tracks. When a bomb on a stack gets stunned, it loses its ability to stay in that stack. However, bombs that are ignited by regular fire, like by a lava bubble, will be able to stay in a stack. They're just ignited. Some forms of damage to a bomb will outright kill it without any sort of detonation. So for example here, icicles, shells, spike balls, and pow blocks will outright kill a bomb, no explosion. However, most forms of destruction that involve crushing the bomb will detonate it immediately, such as here a thwomp being activated with a block on top or crushed by snake block hard block, etc. These methods are far better to trigger a bomb explosion than fire because fire means that you still have to wait a four second timer for the bomb to explode, whereas crushing is instant. In general, these two setups are the most common and most useful to get quick bomb explosions in horizontal worlds. The explosion of a bomb can destroy a variety of different types of breakable blocks, such as ice blocks and hard blocks. Bombs will break terrain within a two block radius of that bomb's edge. A bomb explosion can also kill enemies. However, it's important to note that the explosion radius for killing enemies and doing damage is smaller than the range for breaking terrain, which is two blocks as opposed to only one block for doing damage to enemies. Bombs in 3D World function extremely similarly with only a couple of major exceptions. First, winged bombs will collide with terrain and turn around, unlike winged bombs in 2D world, which will fly through terrain. Additionally, the main ways for crushing and instantly detonating a bomb in 2D world with P-switches or on-off switches don't really work the same way in 3D world, where bombs will poof instead of being detonated. This doesn't mean that you can't use switches to detonate bombs in 3D world. It just means you have to use a different setup to crush the bomb. And trust me, 3D world has no shortage of ways to crush bombs. Bomb explosions will activate a wide variety of different items, such as an exclamation block and on-off switch. Bomb explosions will not directly activate a POW block. However, if the POW block is sitting on a hard block that is destroyed by a bomb, then that POW block will explode. Red POWs, however, can be directly activated by a bomb's explosion. This is useful to note because red POW explosions can be translated to a wide variety of other switches, such as P switches, on off switches, exclamation blocks, and question mark blocks. Bombs can be thrown into clear pipes, and when in a clear pipe, that fuse will stay frozen in time indefinitely. This fuse will also completely reset whenever Mario goes through a door with a bomb in his hand. Now that we know how it works, how do we work with it? In traditional style levels, bombs have a couple of functions. First is that they zone an area exactly like a regular Goomba would. The main difference is that a bomb gives you a bomb. This can be used as a weapon to deal with enemies that otherwise give Mario a lot of trouble. 
or to reveal areas that Mario wouldn't otherwise have access to. Keep in mind that if you're using a bomb to open up areas, you probably want to use a hard block on a track or related to be able to detonate the bomb much more quickly. No one likes a level where you're constantly waiting for bombs to explode. While Mario can hoard a shell potentially all the way to the end of a level, for a bomb, because it has a fuse, you can make sure that there's only so far that Mario can take that bomb before it blows up in his hands. This controls what areas Mario is allowed to use this bomb as a weapon by keeping it somewhat localized. Similarly, large bombs, which cannot be thrown at all, keep that explosion even more controlled as to where you're allowed to use it. As bombs can break hard blocks in a very controlled way, it's useful to use them in order to break screen scroll stops. This setup in particular is extremely useful in 3D World. Whenever a bomb detonates and an enemy is standing on a block that is being destroyed, that enemy will behave as though it was just bonked up from, let's say, a brick block that Mario bonked his head into. This allows you to very easily get a large variety of overturned enemies that you can't normally get access to in the editor, including a stunned bomb arm itself. Bombs also detonate immediately upon contact with lava or melon soda. Bombs are particularly useful in castle levels and nighttime forest levels, where you constantly have a source of lava or poison below to instantly detonate bombs. This especially helps keep flow in Kaizo levels. Bombs find a lot of usage in Kaizo levels. Here, for example, you can use a bomb as a very simple thrown item just to activate a switch. In Super Mario World and New Soup, when you spin jump on a bomb, it'll go in a certain direction, opposite to where you spin jumped on it. This causes the outcome to be different depending on which side of the bomb you landed on. In Kaizo levels, where you usually only want one specific thing to happen, this is frequently used to make sure that Mario has to land on a target that's more precise than just a normal one block wide enemy. Furthermore, the fact that a bomb can be spun on multiple times means that in Kaizo levels, you can use setups where Mario spin jumps on the same bomb multiple times in the same setup and usually ends in activating some switch to make sure that everything was done correctly. One common pitfall in Kaizo levels is using a bomb spin just on straight flat terrain without really mixing it up. Usually if you want to set up multiple bounces on a single target, you want that target to be moving around in more interesting ways. So setups like these, where the bomb timer even goes off prematurely because of the lava, are preferred. It's better to have every bounce be a good bounce as opposed to just filler. Now we finally get to talk about contraptions. Bombs are one of the most frequently used and versatile course parts for contraptions and devices. And the main reason for that is that a bomb allows you to convert easily between a digital signal and an analog signal. Specifically, a switch being activated and something moving in the level. Here, for example, we can use the activation of the on-off switch to crush the bomb, which then opens up a scroll stop. Similarly, we can use this on-off switch to crush that bomb, which breaks the blocks that allows the blaster to irreversibly move out of the way, so that now Mario can always pass through this new gap. These are both examples of converting a digital signal, i.e. the on-off switch, to something moving in the level being the analog signal. Mario can do the exact opposite conversion using a bomb to activate that on-off switch so that now he can cross. Here we have a jump detector setup where if Mario jumps at any point, then he loses access to this door. This works by converting the analog signal of the SMB2 mushroom moving to crush the bomb to convert that signal to an on-off switch activation. In general, bombs are used because the ability to break blocks in a Mario game allows you to directly change between switches activating and other items moving or putting other items in motion in order to do a setup or open a route or whatever. Bombs are also extremely useful for making irreversible setups. So here, you can use bombs to break blocks that don't respawn even when you reset the level. In this way, you can make it so that the level changes even when you reset to keep progress and keep some sort of state in the level. When using bombs, be cognizant of using vine blocks, which do respawn, because if you don't use respawning blocks, you can sometimes get an awkward situation where when Mario resets a room, now he gets access to a bomb that you weren't counting on me having. Bombs can also be used for coin randomizers, such as this one. That's enough theory for one day. Let's look at some actual levels. 
this level really showcases how to use bombs in a traditional setting. Here you see a pipe which is used to have bombs constantly spawn out to keep a consistent threat around an area. Furthermore, the bombs constantly walk into this little gutter so they don't pile up indefinitely. The bombs zone Mario to make it a little bit tougher for him to reach this power-up. The bombs are also used to open up new passageways for secret or alternate routes. And I'm using hard blocks or ice blocks on tracks in order to make it possible for Mario to just open up the passageway without waiting for the full timer for the bomb to explode. These bombs also serve as weapons to attack various enemies in the level that are otherwise very hard for Mario to deal with, specifically giant chain chomps and pokies. Their fuse makes it so that Mario really needs to consistently look for new sources of bombs and all sorts of different sorts of orientations in order to go through the level, as opposed to taking one shell through the whole level and using that as his one single weapon. These winged bombs allow an optional bounce to a higher area to continue. This level also has a mini game where you throw bombs at targets in order to gain prizes. In this Isherwood level, he throws a bomb into the lava to break a hard block that allows the blaster to get out of the way to allow Mario to continue. This Kaizo level by Tuda shows how you can chain all sorts of very basic maneuvers using bombs to force throws, spins, and related and activate switches. This level by Insung starts with a quick bomb setup to quickly give Mario a throwable bomb so he can quickly start using them in so-called hot potato setups that use the fact that the bomb timer stops inside of a clear pipe to shuttle the bomb across the level while Mario does other tricks. While those examples had small bombs, there's no reason why you can't use large bombs. In this 3D World level by Mr. Carps, also using hot potato setups with the clear pipes, you can just kick around these bombs or use boomerangs or other setups that don't even involve Mario touching the bomb directly to shuttle the bomb across the level to do all sorts of creative setups. Honestly, I use bombs a lot more for contraptions than for actual gameplay elements in my levels. For consistency, I'm gonna break up these contraptions into a couple of clear categories. Here, I want to cover a couple of different ways you can use bombs to break scroll stops. This bomb breaks open the scroll stop in response to a P-switch. This scroll stop break activates in response to a P-switch, and the twister gives the bomb immunity to a POW. In this example, the bombs react to a single hard block in that line being broken by the boss. So if the screen scrolls just a little bit, then the bombs will detonate to allow the entire screen scroll stop to break. We also have a bomb to break this scroll stop. This traditional level could be cheesed by Mario running over the screen, except there's a scroll stop over here. And this scroll stop can be broken with this mechanism, powered by a bomb. Again, a similar scroll stop break appears here, powered by a bomb. This scroll stop break activates whenever Mario activates a red POW explosion in the vicinity to spawn the bomb from that question mark block. In this scroll stop breaking mechanism, if Mario activates a POW block, then it breaks the screen scroll stop cleanly with no residue left behind. And here's what it looks like behind the curtain. There's also this automatic screen scroll stop break to add a very, very small delay to an auto scroller for music. This scroll stop break automatically activates whenever Mario gets close to the edge of the screen. And here's what it looks like in action. This scroll stop break activates whenever Mario hits that on off switch, which will then cause a fish to detonate that bomb. Here I'll focus on mechanisms that automatically flip switch states like this, that don't leave debris, unlike a spike ball that when it shatters, it lets down some, some random junk. I also use the bomb in this switch state change, and we have this switch to automatically turn off to on. This bomb automatically turns on to off the moment the level is loaded. This bomb automatically turns off to on. Before the addition of dotted line blocks to 3D World, you could use this mechanism to turn on to off whenever it's loaded. And to automatically flip this switch from on to off, with this spawn block bomb, this mechanism will hit the on off switch after the room is loaded a second time. This bomb is part of a fail safe for this cape mechanism. Cape Mario has jank where he can accidentally hit this switch twice. And this fail safe makes sure that even if that happens, the level will revert back to the normal state so it can continue as normal. Here are some more thematic or decorative uses for bombs. In this music level, this bomb breaks at a specific point in time to shatter these hard blocks in order to play these two sound effects at a specific point in the level. 
In this music level, this bomb carries a party popper sound effect and breaks a variety of brick blocks to make yellow debris in order to emphasize a specific spot like the mic drop of this song. I also use the bomb explosions for a cute little GG at the end of this level. This volcano level uses bombs that automatically break hard blocks in order to automatically generate shake, sound, and debris to sell the idea of an erupting volcano. Here I'll talk about using bombs for irreversible setups. In my first one screen puzzle level, I used bombs in order to irreversibly break blocks. Even though we have reset doors, because the bombs irreversibly break these blocks, we can actually keep some progress in the level every time we reset and slowly work our way to the solution. This puzzle uses a bomb to break open this hard block irreversibly, so whenever you use the reset door, you keep that progress that that task was completed throughout the level. This bomb automatically detonates these hard blocks, which are spawn blocking these build blasters. So the first time you come through, Mario can easily access this bonus room, but after going through that bonus room once, now the blasters are not spawn blocked anymore and will block his access to going in that door again. In this minigame room, you initiate it by activating the snake block, and then you can collect whatever goodies up here, and after some amount of time, that bomb gets crushed to activate a switch that will end the, end the minigame, and because the bomb would get spawn blocked, you only ever get one shot at playing this minigame. Here I'll discuss some don't look left or right detectors. I also use the bomb in this don't look left mechanism, where if you look left at any point, the bomb gets crushed, and then the switch state is changed. And this don't look left mechanism is similar, except it activates a P-switch. And here's an obsolete model made by C that automatically arms after the screen has scrolled a certain distance. A bomb also powers this more modern and completely global don't look right mechanism. Next, I'll discuss how you can use bombs for various triggering mechanisms. This cooking level also uses a bomb to check if a Goomba has gone on the seesaw to check for weight. If, that, if the Goomba does trigger the seesaw and the seesaw goes up, the Bill Blaster crushes the bomb to break the scroll stop to then bring Mario to the next section. In this puzzle, the bomb reacts to being crushed, which will then change the state of how the Wiggler can move through the bottom row. This level also uses a bomb on a seesaw check in order to explode the way forward so that Mario can advance to the next room. This super global contraption turns on to off whenever track blocks have advanced six tiles and then again after seven more tiles. And in this contraption, let's just go on to the next one. And here is a progressive check, which is in this garbage level for no reason at all. Just trust me on it. This is a global freeze frame detector made by GateG, which triggers an on off switch whenever Mario either gains an important power up or loses an important power up. These detectors are used for hot potato setups, where if you kick a large bomb into a clear pipe, then it'll trigger this detector that flips a switch and also allows the bomb to continue moving to its target destination, effectively checking that you are doing the hot potato setup. And lastly, we'll wrap it up with some different odds and ends. This bomb is part of a track timer, where after some amount of time, the muncher will eventually travel far enough along the track in order to automatically kill this bomb and give Mario the key. This bomb is on a track timer that turns on to off after a long delay the first time it's used and after a very short delay every subsequent time it's used. In this level, I use a bomb to activate a POW block using vine blocks that reset so that whenever Mario enters the room, all the chain chomp stumps are quickly revealed. This bomb automatically breaks this question mark block to give Mario a cursed key. I also used bombs in this series of randomizers to make a randomly generated solution for this puzzle level. This obstacle has an alternate route where you can activate this winged bomb in order to break some of the crushing mechanism in order to open up an easier route. This parachuting bomb setup is used to quickly generate some chain chomp stumps. In this shell level, I used a bomb to get a quick spiny shell so that I can do this shell jump. And again here for a quick Koopa shell. This garbage level uses this bomb to automatically give me a Koopa car that is empty. I could keep going, but this should give you a general idea of how to use bombs. I certainly didn't cover everything, but I hope this guide gave you some new ideas to use bombs in your own levels. 
if you liked this content, feel free to subscribe, and feel free to leave some of the things that I missed down below in the comments. With that, I'll see you around, guys. Later!